This is a video review from the National Writing for Children's Center of a little series of books, the mystery series, um, from Healthy, Healthy Kids Publishing. And these two books, the first one is called The Mystery of the Lost Recipe, and the second one is called The Mystery of the Lost Uniforms. And both books were written by Jerome Jones, and he's a teacher. And it tells you a little bit in here. It says to, it's dedicated to my family and all of my students. And I think it's in the back of the book about the author. It says, Mr. Jones teaches and coaches students from elementary to high school levels. Um, he grew up on the central coast of California where the, where the weather is great for many or outdoor activities. Anyway, it's kind of nice. You can kind of tell that a teacher wrote these because there's a lot of um, learning activities in here, things that you can do um, as you're reading to discuss things going on in the children's lives. And the books are supposed to promote healthy lifestyles. So you see these, this little boy and girl, they're the main characters, and they ride their bikes everywhere in this little town where they live on the coast, and they solve mysteries for people in the community. So the first mystery is the mystery of the lost recipe. So we'll take a look at that one first. And I love the covers. I love it that the books are nice and sturdy and very colorful. Um, and then end papers. I usually like colorful end papers. So this has nice vibrant red covers or end papers in the inside. And then the inside page we see the, the title at the end. And then it has a note to the reader in the first book. It says, Abby 11 and Tommy 12 are mystery solvers. This brother and sister team lives in a town called Pismo. They and their whole family enjoy playing sports, listening to music, and eating healthy. These two kids love working together to give back to their community. They help local restaurants, city workers, and sports teams by solving their mysteries. So it starts out, and they're at home with their family. One thing that um, you know I kind of don't like about books like this is when the printing is in such big, bold, black type. So that might be something I would suggest to the author. If you come out with additional books in this series, I would use a different typeset, and I wouldn't make the font bold like this. It just, I don't know, it seems too dark. But the pictures are really nice. I love the way that it's illustrated. And these kids are having breakfast. Um, I noticed that throughout the book, he really promotes kids drinking their orange juice. So that was kind of neat. And what happens in this first book, there's a restaurant, the Orange Surf Restaurant, and the owner there has lost their lasagna recipe. And they're going to lose money during dinner hours. So um, the father or the mother says that's important. So the kids say, we'll eat at the restaurant. So they charge off for the restaurant. And of course, they're wearing their bike helmets. So everything he tries to have kids do in here sets a good example for kids who are reading the story. They're riding their bikes outside. They're getting exercise. They've got their helmets on. They've had a healthy breakfast before they leave. And now they're going out to help somebody in the community. So um, when they get there, they lock their bikes up and their stomachs are rumbling already, which I thought was kind of funny because they had such a good breakfast, but that's okay. And so it says that the breakfast is famous for their fresh squeezed orange juice. It's one of the most popular restaurants in the beautiful town of Pismo. And so they walk in and the head waiter was there and they tell him that they're there to solve the lasagna recipe mystery, but first they want to eat breakfast. And he's so glad there. He gives them some fresh squeezed orange juice and they get fresh fruit. One of them wants some waffles. But then after Tommy ordered, the, the waiter says, we're trying to find the strawberry waffle recipe right now. If we, When we find it, we'll let you know. So they take their seat and they always like to eat in this big window by the ocean, which I think is really great. I love to eat at places like that too. And um, he could look outside and see the waves. And then a few minutes later, one of the people from the kitchen comes back and said, we found the recipe for your delicious waffles. The dish will be right out. So Abby, she's a smart little girl, she says, well, where was the recipe? And the lady tells her it was locked up in a protected safe in the back of the kitchen, okay? So this is nice to know because this is something that is actually foreshadowing to the way Abby and um, Tommy are able to solve the mystery of the lasagna missing recipe. So it's good. Kids can kind of keep up with the story and what's going on and you can ask questions. Um, 
room of the kids to see how they're reading. So he gets his, his waffles and everything's going well. And then they go looking for Mr. Nut. He's the one who owns the restaurant and has lost the recipe. And I love the name that his name is Mr. Nut because he's really not that bright. And I think that's kind of fun too, that a lot of times in children's books, um, you know, adults are made out to be just so much smarter than kids. And in these books, the adults are really not that um, that smart. And they do things. I mean, they're all well-meaning, which is good, but it makes them a little more human that they're just not that much smarter than the kids. So they go to the surf shop and look for them, and the people there tell them that Mr. Nutt is out surfing. So you'll see a lot of nice pictures here, simple pictures, a lot of white space between the text, so it's pretty easy reading. I think uh, teachers and parents would enjoy reading this story out loud, and that's always important because if kids like the story, they're going to have you read it hundreds and hundreds of times. So here comes Mr. Nut out of the water and um, he says that you know he lost the recipe last week when he was at school when he was at the restaurant planning for the um, he made lasagna for the banquet but he lost the recipe and he was in the restaurant when he lost it so there's another clue. So that's what I mean by there are things all along that help kids kind of solve the mystery as they're reading and that the teacher or parent reading the story can kind of guide the kids along to you know well, what kind of clues have we found out or, or what do we know? So then um, what was interesting too is Abby has this notebook. They both have their little notebooks and their computer notebooks and then they've got paper and pens too and they brainstorm all the things that they know so they're able to solve the mystery. I won't give the story away but you'll um, figure it out probably for yourself as you're reading. The kids will too. And then we learn that um, you know, they kind of solve the day, and then they go off and go surfing with Mr. Nut, but they are just waiting for the next mystery to come along, because some of them, you know, some things happen in the neighborhood all the time, as things do in neighborhoods, and then that leads to the next book, which is the mystery of the lost uniform. So we've got the same kids here again, um, on their bikes, and now we open it up again, and bright in covers and then it says note to the reader in the last mystery the mystery of the lost recipe Abby and Tommy helped a local restaurant owner Mr. Nutt solve his case in their small beach town called Pismo who will they help next keep reading to find out and then we see them at home with their family and I like it too where they're nice big pictures um, the text is chopped up in easy to read sections so you know I just hate a picture book where it's just got so much text and it's hard to wade through as a reader reading a story to children but when it's nice and short like this it's easy to read and it also makes it much more enjoyable to listen to so then we go to the next page same kind of thing she's on the phone here and then you know we see them again with their bike helmets on they're always doing things in a way that are good examples for other kids who are listening to the story I won't give the story away but they do get on the radio because they've got to help um, find these basketball uniforms and again the coach is the person who's lost the uniforms the another adult and again this adult doesn't seem that smart to have lost uniforms because it's not that difficult for kids to figure out where they are and I think that's kind of good too because kids listening to the story are gonna feel pretty smart because they can figure it out so um, you know that's nice and then here we see they go back on this on the radio station they thank the DJ they got their bike helmets on again they're riding home um, just nice big pictures plenty of text again though I'd kind of love to see this bright black print kind of toned down. I think that makes it look a little bit more amateur than the book needs to look, but certainly doesn't affect the reading or anything, just the, the way it looks. And then here we are with Mr. Nutt again. So I like that, that we see returning characters, not just the main characters, but people in the community. And then they are having um, dinner here. He's having the lasagna because they found the uh, recipe for that, remember. And then we see how they've solved the case of the uniforms and the coaches there. And just all kinds of little things happen here with the community. So it makes this little town of Pismo sound like a really nice place that kids would enjoy living in too. 
and then they're often waiting for their next adventure and see what's going to happen there. And then again, it's got more information about the author. So I think these are cute little books. They can certainly be used in a preschool or um, lower elementary classroom. Um, maybe even in such a way that you can encourage kids to come up with the next mystery for these two, something that they could solve. And um, I think kids could come up with, you know, a cute little mystery along these lines too. Something I also thought was nice that when I got the books, I got these bookmarks that came with them. Um, and on the back of it, it has a place for the kid's name and it says Five Star Children's Books. And then it's got a little thing about uh, the overall mystery series. So I'd recommend these books for um, teachers, for parents, for grandparents, and just, you know, use them to have fun with kids not only reading and understanding mysteries and things, but also maybe writing their own stories. So the mystery of the lost recipe is the first one, and the second one is the mystery of the lost uniforms, and hopefully Jerome Jones will come up with even more mysteries for this series.